here on Focus on Africa. Now, just how racist is Egypt? A recent survey looking at attitudes to race in Arabic-speaking countries conducted on behalf of BBC News Arabic has revealed that Egyptians don't believe racism is a problem in their country. But this result is contradicted by the testimonies of some darker-skinned Egyptians. Tahani Lahain spoke about her experiences and starts with examples of some of the names she has been called. Fat, dark girl, black and dirty, Hamada, goblin, Tahani, the darkness. The 2022 Arab Barometer Survey revealed a significant acknowledgement that many people were aware of racism in the Middle East, except in Egypt, where only 8% saw it as a problem. 86% of Egyptians said there was no racial discrimination against dark-skinned people. We took the results to Tahani, who openly speaks out against racism in her country. It's a funny statistic to me. Did all these people say that there is no racism or do they not feel the racism? In primary school, when they wanted to discriminate against me, they would call me the fat, dark girl. During the preparatory school, someone said a phrase that I have never heard before. If you want to make fun of a dark-skinned person, let them wear red. During my second year of high school, someone called me Tahani the Darkness. I felt so angry at the time. During that period, there were some creams that were used to lighten the skin. I found out that some girls whose skin color is lighter than me used it. They advised me to use them to lighten the color of my skin. I started to believe that these are the standard measures of beauty. After I graduated from university, I never felt any confidence in myself or my looks. I started to feel less than others, of a lower social class and worse looks. Almost 10 years ago, I saw a psychologist and found out I was crying because of all these hurtful words. In Egypt, the most populous country in North Africa, there are no laws to criminalize racial discrimination. But darker-skinned people have long complained of being subjected to racism on the streets. There have been incidents where African refugees were subject to violence. I went to a store to buy a dress. I saw a red dress. I bought it, out of spite. I only wore it once. I bought it because I wanted to prove to myself that it's normal to wear red. There was the rise of hip-hop and rap music, like that of Beyonce and Missy Elliott that began to spread in Egypt. The standards of beauty began to change. People started accepting their beauty. They realized that there are in Egypt those who looked like me. I started loving my hair and my color. Tahani believes that the change starts with education and the media. I wish that they knew. I wish that they would not ridicule us on TV and in movies. Not to use a black or dark-skinned girl, whether Egyptian or not, to make fun of her, or as an example of ugliness, or being inferior to others. There is no better skin color. People should know this. Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Michael Robbins. He's a director and co-principal investigator at Arab Barometer, who actually carried out that investigation on behalf of the BBC. Dr. Robbins, thanks for talking to us. Uh, just how big a problem would you say racism is in the Arab world? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, certainly, this is a groundbreaking study. It's the first study that we've ever done, um, to my knowledge or to anyone's knowledge that, that I've talked to about race in the Middle East and North Africa. And what we see here is that men is not unique. Racial discrimination is a problem everywhere. But tackling the problem requires understanding about how it's seen by ordinary citizens. And so in that sense, what we want to do is understand, do citizens perceive this to be a problem? And we see that in the majority of countries surveyed, that many, that over half of citizens say that racial discrimination is in fact a problem. So we do see that citizens across much of the region are taking this seriously. Mm. Um, however, we also do see that the positions who say that racial discrimination um, is a problem tends to exceed those who say anti-black anti -black racism is a problem suggesting there may be an awareness of additional minorities and men that are also suffering discrimination. So on the whole, 
um, we do see that this is something that Minnesota citizens are taking quite seriously. It's quite interesting there because if you listen to what uh, Tahani said in that video clip, she talks about the way black people or darker skinned people are portrayed in the media in the Arab world. Just how are they portrayed in the media in that part of the world? So the absolutely the 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 interview was was correct that there is a common it's common to portray black individuals in stereotypical or negative manners um it's also obvious that such portrayal reinforces racist stereotypes about such individuals and that changing this is really important to combat racism across the region um and unfortunately one of the things we do see in the survey itself is that many citizens do favor greater inclusion of black individuals on tv suggesting that many, again, not all, but many are open to potentially seeing a change in how black people are portrayed on TV. But certainly she's correct. This is a significant problem in MENA. Mm. And what about the governments in, in that part of the world? Are they taking ownership of this problem and trying to find solutions to the racism that you say exists there? So I, I would say that it, it, there are certain steps that have been taken. For example, all governments in the Middle East and North Africa have signed the International Convention on the elimination of all forms of racial discrimination. But I think there's more steps that would be necessary to tackle this problem. Only Tunisia has taken specific actions to criminalize racial discrimination in their domestic laws. Mm. Other countries such as Egypt, sorry. No, no, uh, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, in places like uh, the United States or even here in the UK um, and other parts of the world, you know, racism is something that is actually discussed within communities. Is this something that you've noticed in the Arab world? Would people just sit down and talk about, you know, the racism that exists there? I, I think that it is uh, in some ways still a topic that's not discussed enough. That um, we have seen, uh, I, I think, a potential increase in this. And we do see people are at least acknowledging and aware of this, which is really the first step to tackling the broader problem is an awareness and a salience. And again, Egypt stands out in that regard. And I think it would be important to really focus on this problem in Egypt because clearly there is racism and we need to raise awareness. I think a lot of this may be due to reluctance to tackle racial issues. It can be uncomfortable. It brings up uncomfortable legacies on the matter and certainly places the actions of individuals in a potentially negative light, but it is something that is necessary. So it's not something that has been discussed as widely um, as, as would be necessary to really tackle it. But I think that one of the things our survey has shown is that at least there is a greater awareness and potentially opening that conversation in a way that the Tunisia really did when passing its law in 2018 is a very important step, and, and so certainly it needs to be done more. Mm. Dr. Michael Robbins from the Arab Barometer, thank you very much for that fascinating insight into this story.